Okay. Um, hello, this is our presentation on the facial nerve and the condition known as crocodile tears. Um, I'm Harry and I'll be talking about like the anatomy and the course of the nerve and then I'll pass over to Greg who will be talking about like the clinical aspect of the nerve. Okay, so the facial nerve or corneal nerve 7 is a mixed nerve and it has two main components which are the somatic motor component and its special sensory component. Um, it then also has two hitchhiker components of it which are the autonomic parasympathetic efferent and it's got some general se sensory afferents as well which join in. Um, there's lots of different terminology about the nerve so we'll just quickly cover that. So. Um, the facial nerve is sometimes used just on its own to describe just the motor component and then corneal nerve 7 proper um, can be used alone to describe the motor component and the special sensory component so that's like the main components of the nerve and then when corneal nerve 7 is generally used it's used to describe like all components including like the parasympathetic um, hitchhikers and the general sensory part as well. Okay, so this is just basically a schematic diagram of um, corneal nerve 7 proper. Um, if you look closely, um, it arises in the pons within the corneal cavity, like within the brain. Um, the motor component arises from the motor nucleus, and the um, special sensory component arises from the nucleus solitarius. Um, these kind of run along side each other into the internal acoustic meatus and then out into the facial canal, which is this thread shaped canal here. Um, within the facial canal, they fuse and they form this geniculate ganglion um, from which you get like a branch known as the greater petrosal nerve, and then you get some other branches within the facial canal as well, which are the corda tympani and nerve dystopedius. The nerve then exits the stylomastoid foramen and the corneal cavity, and it it travels down into the parotid gland, giving off some branches beforehand, which are here. And within the parotid gland, it gives off, it gives off its five terminal branches, which are all here. Um, just a point to make that once the nerve exits the stylomastoid foramen, it's only got motor innovation. That's why it's all in red, and it goes off to supply all the muscles. Um, just looking at corneal nerve 7 now, so this is the parasympathetic um, uh, fibres as well, as well as the general uh, sensory fibres. So the parasympathetic um, hitchhike, oh, we'll start from the top, so we'll start in the ponds in the superior salivatory nucleus um, and then they kind of go into the, this nervous intermediate, into the internal acoustic meatus with um, the other fibres into the facial canal and within the facial canal they branch off and hitchhike along um, the greater petrosal nerve and the corda tympani and they, these fibres then travel to the pterygopalatine ganglion and the submandibular ganglion um, as was mentioned in the previous um, lecture by Will. Um, we then, that, that's like the parasympathetic aspect. If you look at the general sensory that's where the greater auricular nerve comes in and that's basically like sensory innovation to your ear um, but that comes into the nervous intermediate and joins in there. Um, just what they innovate, so they innovate, um, the motor component innovates the muscles of facial expression so that's like your um, frontalis muscle, your platysma, zygomaticus and those kind of muscles. Um, the posterior belly of the digastric muscles, stylohyoid and stapedius. Um, the special sensory part um, provides taste to your anterior two thirds of your tongue, and the rest of that is um, provided by your glossopharyngeal nerve, which is cranial nerve 9. Um, your parasympathetic supply goes to the glands of your head and neck, and they're all listed here. Lacrimal Greg will come onto shortly um, with the condition that he's going to cover. And then general sensory, so that's. Um, that via the greater auricular nerve and that um, supplies sensory innovation to the inferior half of your auricle. Um, yeah, and this is just for you to use in your own time um, and it just shows like um, what muscles and glands are innovated by the different nerves. And the branches just to cover quickly, so you have um, 
just to summarise, you've got 300 coronal branches, which are the corda tympani, nerve to stapedius, and the greater petrosal nerve, and then eight extra cranial branches, which are listed there. Um, the way to remember the five terminal branches, which are found within um, the parotid gland, is to Zanzibar by motor car. So you can remember that if you want. Um, and also just remember that eight extra cranial, that are motor nerves. So, yeah. Um, that's on to Okay, lovely, thank you. So I'm going to go through some of the clinical stuff that you get uh, with cranial nerve 7. Uh, and so we'll start off with the kind of two different forms of palsy that you can get, um, which is a facial nerve pearl palsy, uh, as it says up there, which is usually permanent. But the main thing about this is it has an identifiable cause, so something that's uh, causing the facial nerve to become damaged in some way and then causing the effects from that. This is opposed to a Bell's palsy, which is usually temporary and does usually have an unidentifiable cause, although there's a theory that it may be viral uh, infection that causes Bell's palsy, but this hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, and so the symptoms that you get is what you'd expect with a facial nerve um, injury, is that the muscles of the facial nerve aren't supplied properly. So you get a, a lack of symmetry across the face, your tear ducts wouldn't work properly, your eyelids would uh, close over in tosis and you, your mouth wouldn't close properly so you'd have a drooling of saliva from out of that as well. So there are lots of potential causes of damage to the facial uh, nerve. The top two uh, are probably two of the big ones to think about if you think about the anatomical course of the facial nerve in that it goes through the middle area and that it goes past the parotid gland as well. So in that case that in any damage or infection that you've got arising from there can affect the facial nerve. As well as this damage in kind of delivery of babies by forceps, um, any damage which is of the facial nerve itself, so an infection or inflammation uh, to the nerve, which is common in herpes infection, you can see that. Uh, and in surgery, uh, there are a variety of different um, surgical interventions which get them close to the facial nerve, so it can be quite commonly damaged that way. And then also, as we touched upon, a Bell's palsy, which is sort of idiopathic. So uh, up on the screen there you can see sort of the grading of how uh, a facial nerve palsy can be can differ so from severe to um, you know not very damaged at all. So it's not like an all or nothing thing that a partial damage will cause an entire paralysis of the face. It depends on so I'll clear it a little bit. Um, okay, so just getting on to the thing about crocodile's tears. So crocodile tears is a term um, used because crocodiles uh, lubricate their eyeball before eating. So it looks like crocodiles uh, are actually feeling sorry for their prey before they eat them. Um, so this is why the cro term crocodile tears comes about because it means that people who you know don't feel sorry are actually crying tears for you. So crocodile tears in a human is seen when you get damage to your parasympathetic efferents uh, when they're um, such as in bowel bo palsy and facial nerve palsy. And then when these fibers try to repair themselves from the superior salivatory nucleus, they actually attach to the axons which go to the lacrimal glands. So therefore, when, you're stimu when the um, salivatory nucleus is stimulated by eating, um, your lacrimal glands are stimulated and you, uh, you start crying just before eating. So patients present with problems and then they go for a meal in a restaurant and then suddenly burst into tears and it's quite embarrassing. So um, yeah, that's that on uh, Bogorad syndrome. And um, the facial nerve examination, we were going to demonstrate, but I'm not sure we've got exact time, but it's just remembering to test all the muscles that the facial nerve supplies across the face, so raising the eyebrows and then trying to pull apart the eyes against resistance, a gentle resistance obviously, uh, giving a big smile and then trying to press against the cheeks just to test that the muscles of facial expression are all working properly. Uh, that's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much.